Welcome to Photo Work. Today we are on our part two of our interview with Graham Dunn, fashion photographer based out of LA, who's worked with such brands as Abercrombie, Anthropology, Free People. Free People. And in this episode, he shares with us what it's like working with those big brands. And he also shares with us his film gear setup, which we might have geeked out over. So <laughs> enjoy. Well, uh, can you tell us about what a day looks like shooting for? say like the free like free people the free people <laughs> am i old <laughs> the google <laughs> the google um what's yeah so what does a day look like uh say for a larger brand when you're shooting them you know it varies so much actually because some companies are run totally internally even though and then com companies that are of the same scale are run uh like they hire vendors you know like production companies and stuff like that so um it really depends. I'd say the general thing is um, I get a creative brief of some kind. They talk to, you know, they, they like do the bid. My agent will do the bid and that kind of stuff um, on the on the preliminary side. Um, then there's back and forth usually over email and conference calls of um, going over the creative brief. And, you know, it, usually ideally there's like some talk about casting and stuff. Sometimes people are already cast and everything's set, you know. Um, Ideally, like if I could weigh in on any one thing, it would be casting just because I feel like that, like that's the actor in your movie, um, you know, and a good model will make a white wall look cool. And, you know, if people are a little more green or a little more rigid, it's hard to get those uh, kind of looser moments from them, you know. Um, so ideally some weigh in on casting, talk about the creative stuff. Then usually um, once everything's set, like the day before, ideally we'll go th on a scout just so we kind of know what's happening, where the light is, what are spots we like, um, like what things the client like really thinks are nice for this and what things they think is like too weird or gritty or chaotic or whatever, you know? And ideally you're telling this story in like the most minimal way, I think, you know, just for absolute clarity, you know? Um, so yeah, usually we have a scout um, and I go back and forth like because I'll have some team. If it's digital, you'll have like a digital tech and you'll have an assistant or two assistants. And, um, you know, so we got to talk about what gear we need and where we're going to be and what's our approach to lighting and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the day of the shoot, like usually it starts pretty early. Um, uh, models go into hair and makeup and then like maybe there's a fitting or ideally they've had a fitting the day before, you know, because sometimes they're tailoring clothes or that kind of stuff. Um, so. Yeah, ideally that stuff's happened the day before. They go into hair and makeup. Um, the photo team basically like eats catering for like an hour. And then um, then we take a walk around again, look at the same locations, kind of get our plan in order, um, get the gear we need in the right spot and uh, get set up. And then we just basically shoot, shoot a bunch. Like it really varies how many looks you do a day, you know, like comfortable I'd say is like six to 10 is nice. Uh, 12 to 15 is like more realistic. Mm -hmm. Over 15 is heavy, I would say. And there's days I'm shooting 30 looks a day, you know, Ooh. but it's, uh, it's heavy, yeah. it's very heavy, you know? And usually it's paced, like these 10 are important and these 10 are like uh, a little more and like, we'll just shoot them more simply because we need it for something that's less important or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. it, it really varies though. And sometimes you're doing like four a day. It really just varies. It varies on the needs and the budget and like all that stuff. But at a point you split it into a couple of days, you know? Like, to me, like, 10 a day is pretty good. That's nice. But um, it's changed. People are shooting a lot more than they used to, I think. So, um, yeah, but that's basically it. Then you just finish up. You have lunch. You have lunch in the middle. Mm -hmm. Catering. <laughs> you wrap up in the afternoon. Everyone high fives. You go to a team dinner or you drive away. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. But it's pretty normal. You know, I think it's pretty normal how it goes. And um, mostly people have done it a bunch. And so they're all kind of, like, pretty tuned on how that goes. But... I'd say the preliminary stuff, like the going over the creative brief and, um, you know, conference call and scout and stuff, like that's the main thing that varies with a job versus like an editorial or whatever. Like, I mean, editorial, you could go that way. It just depends. It depends on the scale of it. Mm -hmm. so that's what I'd say. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty logical, you know, I think. And usually you're on maybe a 10 hour day is typical. Yeah. What's, so, uh, what's post-production look like for a shoot like that? How do they, wildly uh, varied too. Oh, do they really want to weigh in more on your selects or do they want to make the selects? Oh, it depends so much. Um, there are many ways to go. Like for me, there's a few ways. One would be I'd take the film and then I'd send proofs to the client and or a creative director or whoever, and they'll, they'll pick their favorites and present them to the client. Um, 
So that's one route. And then, so I'll narrow things down and get rid of like ones that I just would be like, please don't print this, you know? Um, another one is like, they have a whole in-house team and they walk with a hard drive, which like, I think that's very common now. I think in the old days that would probably be unheard of, you know? It's like giving all your negatives to someone, which mm -hmm. you also do sometimes these days, you know? <laughs> it's the nature of it, I think. Um, and some, have, some people have very elaborate post processes and they have like a whole structure and like they've got servers, they've got people just to run the servers. Like it's a whole empire. Um, sometimes it goes to a third party retoucher, sometimes I retouch. Um, and then there's also like a lot of print specs, like it just depends. Some things are very casual. It's like, hey, can you send us these 10 pictures? And I just retouch them lightly and email them. And sometimes it's like they're s sending it to like some retoucher who's got a fabric swatch on their desk to match exactly. You know, it just really depends. It depends on the scale. It depends on how sort of like gestural and um, moody that pictures are versus like how much they're documenting the product, you know? Because if it's like, we need a clear read on these pants, you gotta be careful. If it's like, we want people to feel this, then it's looser, you know? Every company is super different though. A lot of the bigger ones are, they produce things in house, I would say. So um, sometimes I just pass things to their, their people. One thing I would say is like, I often do the color, mm -hmm. even if I don't retouch it, just to put like my spin, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it really varies. You kind of just learn it in a new time every, with each client. Like I can present to them like the way, like this is a nice way to work, but um, often they have their own protocol. So we follow that. And same, like if you have a Digitech, they'll name things according to their convention and like all, all this stuff. So it becomes a very like, it can become very procedural or it can be very loose. Um, just depends. Do you still shoot test shoots? I do, yeah, yeah. I do do that sometimes. I don't do like um, paid tests for people or that kind of stuff really. Um, I just don't really have time for that. Um, and I really like it, but I just, I don't do that. But. Um, but if there's people who are inspiring or it's like a cool model, it's just came through LA for like two days, then yeah, I'll try to catch them. And um, I have like enough of a network of friends and stuff that usually we could just set up something creatively fulfilling and uh, that would be fun, you know, Yeah. basically. So yeah, I do do that. It's like a little more serious than just like, yeah. um, you know, bring a bag of your clothes though, you know, but. Um, it's more personal work. Yeah, we call it personal work, yeah. Yep. <laughs> but that actually works as a test. Yeah, it's basically as a test, though. Mm -hmm. It's basically yeah. a test, however you slice it, but it's like a more elaborate test, ideally, mm -hmm. you know? Unless I'm literally testing, like, I need to figure out this, like, I need to use this light and do this certain thing, then, like, yeah, someone could be kind of a guinea pig in a way, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, yeah, I think people just call it personal work, you know? Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's a test. It's a test. That's a test, yeah. But I do, I enjoy it, it's fun, and also, like, yeah, it's always fun. I enjoy shooting. I, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. Um, right. And for me, like shooting all the time is is like I enjoy that. So I I do, and I know other people, and it works better for them to shoot like a couple big things a month, you know, or whatever they do. But for me, I just shoot always because I don't know. It's it's interesting to me always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you build out your test shoots? Like what what's like the starting point for you? Sometimes it's uh, collaboration with me and the stylist and we we have an idea and look for somebody um most often it's like to me it's just who the model is basically because the casting's super important um and so they're usually the jumping off point for me um and when i'm like physically producing it because that's you know i often do that um then i start with them and then i fill in the pieces you know St stylist and model for me would be the main thing because like there are a lot of great hair and makeup people I work with um, who I really like, but I think I, I tend pretty naturally, you know? Um, and so really the clothes and the model will tell the story the main thing. And then sometimes I shoot like beauty stuff or whatever, and that can get really experimental. And then it's all about the makeup artist or the hairstylist or both. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depends. Um, but for something that's more about the clothes, then yeah, it's the model and stylist, I think that would, that would push that. But you want every piece of your team to be really good, so. I wouldn't weigh one over the other. And just thinking where I actually start from. Um, usually it's the casting, mm -hmm. you know? And if I could shoot off of there, how do you get a stylist on board for like a personal shoot or a test? Yeah, it's a challenge. It just depends. Like n now I have people I've worked with over the years, you know, and we've all kind of like grown up together in a way. Like, we, we, like we've worked together for like a decade, you know? So um, there's people that I work with all the time, but um, it depends, you know, if it's for a magazine, um, that's obviously way easier because you get a letter of rec and then they can pull really good clothes or, or usually uh, 
they ship really good clothes is what happens in LA. Mm -hmm. um, if it's just for kicks, like it's, it's just seems to be about like who you know. And I think that like when you're trying to work that part of it out, you just work with a lot of different people and just see who you kind of like and who has similar style to what you're aiming for or who's narrative or who's more minimal or who's more whatever your aesthetic is, then I think you tie to those people and, um, and then it's easier and it becomes easier because styling styling's one of the hardest pieces of the puzzle because like um, tests and stuff can get you work. Um, the brands sometimes see the clothes and really like how you shot them and they will hire you. Um, getting stuff is difficult because they like showrooms or designers don't want to lend stuff out just for kicks, you know, basically. Having relationships with brands over the years helps too because then you can pull from them and they trust you or know you're not going to like paint their clothes in a bad light or that kind of thing, you know, you're not going to do like some craziness with something they worked hard on. Um, so all of those things contribute, but I think it comes down to the same as marketing. It's just like shoot a lot and work with a lot of people and see who you like and then you start to get these uh, relationships with people that, you know, tie you to them in a way. Yeah. Is that your experience? Yeah, I think yeah. so. We're, we're, still, we're still, we're still learning ourselves. You have recurring, uh, uh, like teammates you work with? We, uh, uh, makeup, makeup artists. Yeah. Stylists. Anything, we're, yeah. we're still but trying fashion to. Fashion stylist has been really tricky. Of course they've shown up for like editorial, Yeah, but yeah. for personal. Yeah. It's, it's tougher. tougher. So mm -hmm. we have to, yeah. we have to make that friend. Yeah. 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 It's or tougher. get those pull letters. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. It's easier. Like, yeah, it, it's tough. And the California is trickier too, I think, cause it's not a, the, like there's certain, it's not like a hub of a certain type of styling. Like there's tons of denim here and a lot of interesting things and a lot of great designers. And I think LA is changing a lot too. Um, so there's a lot of that stuff here, but still a lot of styles and clothes and stuff come from New York or wherever, you know, sometimes they even come from Europe. So mm -hmm. just depends, but some of that side, like, yeah, it, I mean, it can be, it can be, it's interesting and it depends what you like to shoot and how you want to shoot it too, you know, cause you have to be really careful with that stuff. You can't go lying on the grass in certain clothes, you know? Yep. So it just depends. It really depends, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. What did you wish you knew before becoming a fashion photographer? That is a very tough question. Yeah. What would you tell I wish uh, I knew. What would I tell you about the business? So I'm starting out. I think the the biggest thing I, I think is, like I said, like I still find things very difficult. Like uh, there's so many things I want to do and so many places I want to go and so many like like heights to climb to that you want to climb to, you know? So I think like I tell my starting self and also myself now, like just uh, keep going always, you know? Like you really just have to keep going because in, in the minute to minute and day to day, it could be like frustrating or disheartening. Um, but overall, it's like really good and fun and interesting and like a cool job and a cool, uh, like it gives you so many interesting opportunities and like meet interesting people and stuff. But it can be very like, it can be like for me at least, I find it like a bit nerve wracking and uh, all that just because you know there's like a lot of money or a lot of like a narrow window of time or whatever it is. There's like a lot of things riding on this, you know, like, you know, oh, this company spent a bunch of money to do this. I'm going to give it my best. and. What else can you do? You know, you try to be prepared, but I think just like pushing through and never stopping is basically the thing. Cause you can just keep going and you look at like photographers who are 50, 60 years old, who've had like so many arcs in their career or like so many eras of stuff they were trying, you know, it's like this person used to be like a completely different photographer 10 years ago than they are now. And what they are interested in and the way they shoot and all that stuff has changed or technology changed and they tried a new thing or whatever it is, you know, or, or some fluke for this client that they tried was great. And then they just went down that path or, you know, like you can never see what's coming, but I think if you just like persist always, that's probably, gen that's probably, that applies to everything in the, in life. Maybe like any job, anything you just like, just keep going pretty much, you know, cause there's always another thing, you know, basically. And I think keeping busy is helpful too. Like just, I don't know. I go back and forth in this, but I think shooting a lot's helpful. Like I said before, like I, I think that's, it's fun and it's like fulfilling and even a bad day is like pretty good. And you can just learn something, you mm -hmm. know, and l learning many little some things that are filed away in the back of your brain help a lot. So you said shoot a lot. Oh yeah. I think shooting a lot. And I think just keep going, you know, basically that, that, that's what helped me. I think, um, 
I don't know. Yeah, to each their own, I guess. Because some people, like I said, they prefer to really focus on like a single thing, you know, like one big project, one big project. For me, I, I tend to shoot more often, I think. Um, I, I don't know why. I just like it. I enjoy it. Yeah. yeah so just keep going, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And to give people an idea, how often is often? Oh, it really varies. Because um, sometimes I'll be on like a streak of jobs where I'm just working um, in blocks, kind of. They all seem to stack up, you know, so usually... I don't know why that is, but it, they seem to stack up. And a lot of jobs are multiple days, you know, so then uh, it'll be all jammed together and then I'll have like a week off. And so I'll just try to shoot a bunch, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I don't know. I feel like, I think I average maybe 70 shoots a year or something like that, maybe, maybe more, but some of those are multiple days, you mm -hmm. know? So it just depends, it really depends. Cause it really ebbs and flows seasonally too. Cause clothes are seasonal, weather seasonal. Um, sometimes I'm traveling if it's bad weather or whatever it is, you know? So. I'd say it ebbs and flows, basically. But if I have a little gap, I'll try to keep busy because I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I usually do not nerd out on camera gear, but oh, I am yeah. fascinated by your film setup. Like, what, what is your go-to film setup? Oh, my gosh. Uh, is there a favorite? There are a lot I like. I, I honestly, I've seen this the other day. Like, I've never found a camera that's like, this is the perfect camera. I just need this one. Like, I, li I just like the way this one is. I change a lot um, for a lot of reasons. I probably tried, like, every camera. And I, I like, buy and sell them all the time. I break them all the time. Um, for film, I use uh, Nikon F6 a lot, which is, like, a very modern 35 millimeter camera. Um, I use that because it's pretty reliable. It's, it's actually, like, a little delicate, weirdly. But um, it's pretty reliable. Um, so I travel with that one a lot. I shoot with that one a lot. It's um, upside is it's super modern and reliable. Downside is uh, you can blast through film like crazy fast on that one. Yeah. And so for conversely, I like the F3 because you have to wind it. Um, and so that slows me down a little bit. And it's manual focus too. So that slows me down. Um, and you like miss focus a lot and stuff, which I like. Like I like when things get weird. So um, that's another one I like a lot. And then um, I shoot a contact 645 fairly often. Um, which I like it a lot. Uh, you can also blast through film fast on that one. Yep. I like 645 because you get at least 16 shots, which is nice. Um, I sometimes shoot Pentax 6.7 here and there. Um, I use my buddy Tyler's, um, who shares this studio. Um, but you only get 10 pictures, which is pretty hard. Yeah. Like if you have a couple of those and you're running them in sequence, you know, but like I did a job the other day, and I think we literally had nine cameras on the table. Just and you just shoot a roll on each one and just cycle them through, you know, and I, I rent them from people or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I own a bunch, so. Yeah, I guess that's, I like the variety. Each one feels different too, and the pace is different, and the look is different and stuff, so I actually shoot kind of a variety pack in a way. Like I, and also for safety, like on a job, I'll never shoot one camera. Digital, right. maybe, yeah, sure, but, um, but I bring a backup. But um, for film, I never shoot one camera. I'll shoot two 35s or whatever it is for, like sometimes I'll put a different lens on both, just for speed, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I just do it for safety. But I always shoot too because you don't want to go down and then, or you find out your entire shoot is toast because your camera was like acting fine and it's not. Right. So at least you got a 50% hit if you were shooting <laughs> multiples, you know? So I would definitely highly recommend that. I've definitely heard of shoots. And in fact, there's been shoots where people said like, you can't shoot film because the last person had trouble. That's mm -hmm. happened to me before. And I was like, oh, that's why you always got to shoot two cameras, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of learned that like, not from my own hard way, but from other people's hard way, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's great advice. <laughs> um, some, some people want only digital, like for whatever reason, for retouching purposes, like maybe the product needs to be like super, super crisp. Like, cause often what happens is they'll change the, sometimes the pattern, which is insane, but um, like difficult, but um, sometimes it's just the color of a style will change or something. So like I've had that happen where people, people got to have digital just cause they need to change things in post and they don't know where it's going to go. So they need some range there. But um a lot of times digital is because they like that, digital is because it works with their workflow or because like um, they need it for speed, basically. So yeah, I work a lot of ways, all digital. Sometimes I shoot digital as like a Polaroid and then move to film, but the client at least has something to see and or work with in the layout and that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes I'm tethered, sometimes I run cards, which is nice because you can break away a little. It's like as close to shooting film as you can be, but it's like, I mean, it's less precise for sure. Um, and then a lot of jobs I just shoot all film, but I shoot multiple bo bodies just for safety. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But like travel jobs sometimes, I, I will just take film, that's it. Um, and that's a whole nother thing because you got to screen it through the x-ray, you got to get a hand check and do the whole thing. And yep. it's like- And they don't yeah. want to do it. And they don't want to do it, yeah. Uh, yeah, they don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, in Italy the guy was like, 
he just outright refused to do it. And I really had to beg him. I was literally like almost on my knees, just mm -hmm. please. He, and then, he was trying to scan it. Yeah, he was like, he was like, it's fine, don't worry about it. And I was like, please don't do that. And you also, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. But anyway, yeah, so I do a good amount of stuff and a lot of personal work on film, but I, I like digital sometimes too, actually. Uh, and um, I vary, you know, I guess. It just depends on the look you want, I guess. But clients, it's often for speed. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's the biggest factor because they don't necessarily care what you're shooting on but they care about th th this is due quick, you know? Right. So that's often the reason why digital, yeah. And budget sometimes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, digital's not necessarily cheaper because you gotta have a tech and that kind of stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually not so different, at least that's how I present it. Mm -hmm. um, depends your volume of what you're shooting, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So one more uh, sure. camera nerd question. Sure. Go to 35 millimeter film. What is your go to? 35 film. I only shoot two films. I shoot Tri-X for black and white, um, and I shoot Portra. Mostly 400. Yeah. yeah. Nothing too tricky or interesting. I've tried a lot over the years and experimented and stuff, but I shoot those two because they're like so reliable. And honestly, on jobs, I basically only shoot color, and then I convert it to black and white later, which is not optimum. Like, I think Tri-X looks better, but um, you, you, like I do it just as a safety, because sometimes you have to... Um, like you have to have a, a color option basically and I don't want to shoot double so yeah I often do that for myself I shoot it just straight black and white because I know that's what I want um, and for digital too actually I preview in black and white on my screen um, which helps me see the light and like cut the chatter a little bit so um, yeah I, and I like black and white a lot but marketing wise that's less you know like yeah. most some some brands like it or they'll take a mix but mostly people want color i think that's right mm -hmm. so i mostly shoot portrait 400 and i shoot portrait 400 and i rate my meter and all the cameras at 400 just because oh or you know sometimes i over underexpose and i rate everything but i rate it all the same just so that i don't have to think between bodies because there's enough stuff to figure out between each one right. it's like just slightly different you know so i try to like keep my mind as clear as possible in that regard um but yeah and I'll shoot the digital for under two. I'll just match it all, and I think less. You know, the less you can think, the better I think, because um, you get caught up in like other people don't care what you're doing. You might, you know, but like model or someone doesn't want to hear about you fiddling. You know, yep. they just want to shoot. So <laughs> yeah. you just try to dust. Can I get out of this freezing weather in this skimpy outfit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try to be. I try to be like untechnical. You know, even though like you are technical secretly, you try to just like not present it that way. Maybe. Yeah. You know. Uh, thank you so much yes. for being on the show. We really, really nice. appreciate everything. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was great. It's the Graham Dunn fan club over here. Yeah, we're the fan club. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's really cool to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. It was cool. It was fun. Yeah. Thanks. Until next time. Yeah. Yeah. Go for round two today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It wouldn't be YouTube if we weren't shamelessly asking you to like and subscribe. Yeah. Also, comment down below who you want to see us interview, what you want to learn, and also the most important, where to get the best tacos in your town is. Because we love tacos. Tacos are good. Bye. You know, we're like, like. <laughs>